Hello! So I'm doing this video today about vaccinations and I'm aware that this is an incredibly controversial topic um, and people are very passionate on both sides of the debate um, and for good reason, honestly. So I am I'm not a doctor or a medical professional and I'm not claiming to be and I'm not trying to give medical advice. I'm just sharing information that I was really glad to know when I was making this decision for my family. In 1986, Congress passed the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act in order to stabilize a vaccine market adversely affected by people suffering loss or harm from vaccination. So this act shields pharmaceutical companies and doctors from liability if vaccines cause injury or death. Um, and I think it's really important to know that in the 32 years that this law has been active, over $4 billion dollars has been paid out to families who've suffered a loss or um, an injury um, from vaccinations. The $4 billion that has been paid out wasn't paid from the pharmaceutical companies, but it is paid out by a tax that is on each vaccine that goes into a fund that people get paid from that fund. So it's kind of built into the system to pay for the damages that it causes. I would recommend looking into the story of Porter who his family was compensated for his vaccine injury. His mom did an interview in the documentary Bot, which is available online. I can put the link in the description box. In 1962, there were five doses recommended. In 1983, there were 24 doses recommended. And this is when a lot of people were suing the pharmaceutical companies. And after they got shielded from any liability, the vaccine schedule has exploded and it is now to where it is here in 2018. Also, it's important to know the ingredients in vaccines, some of which are very concerning. The ones that I'm most concerned about is aluminum, which is a known neurotoxin, formaldehyde, which is a known carcinogen, and mercury. And a lot of people have told me that mercury is no longer in vaccines, but it is in fact in many flu vaccines. Um, which is important to know because flu vaccines are recommended for most people from six months until death every year. So I have here a vaccine insert and it says, MMR2 has not been evaluated for carcinogenic or mutagenic potential or potential to impair fertility. Um, so that's really good to know, especially because a lot of vaccines have carcinogenic ingredients and then they have also not been tested if it causes cancer or not. I have a quote from this book that is how to raise a healthy child in spite of your doctor and it is written by a pediatrician. He says there is a growing suspicion that immunization against relatively harmless childhood diseases may be responsible for the dramatic increase in autoimmune diseases since mass inoculations were introduced. These are fearful diseases such as cancer, leukemia, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, lupus, and Guillain-Barre syndrome. Have we traded mumps and measles for cancer and leukemia? And I think that that is a valid question, especially because vaccines have not been tested for carcinogenic potential. The current vaccine schedule has not been tested for safety and vaccines have not been tested given multiple at a time. They're tested given one at a time, and then they're actually given in doctor's offices, maybe up to five at a time. So another point that I found interesting was that double-blind placebo-controlled studies are not required for vaccinations and have not been done for childhood vaccines. Um, many people think that it's unethical to leave a child vulnerable to these diseases, although many parents have willingly opted out of these vaccines. So I have this quote from the World Health Organization. A true placebo is an inert substance, but in the context of vaccine research, the term placebo is also applied to other types of comparators that are not inert, but are not expected to protect against the disease of interest in a vaccine trial. So that's something to think about when you see something that says it's 
safe as placebo. Try to find out what that placebo was. Um, a lot of times it's another vaccine, but sometimes it can be an injection of aluminum. So here's a list of some of the adverse reactions listed in the MMR2 vaccine insert. So there's atypical measles, fever headache, anaphylaxis, arthritis, encephalitis, um, Guillain-Barre syndrome, transverse myelitis, febrile convulsions, seizures, um, immunocompromised individual, individuals can have a fatal outcome. Cases of aseptic meningitis have been reported to the bears. Stevens-Johnson syndrome and a measles-like rash. I hope that um, you look into a lot of things for yourself and um, feel more equipped to make an educated decision for yourself.